Hey, good morning. Okay, Mr. Robinson, again, American History 2. All right, all right, all right. So um, today I'm going to be going over the Vietnam War and some of the issues that America, with American involvement in the Vietnam War, because again, this is American history, okay? Um, not, so, not necessarily starting world history, American history, but America was involved in this war and there were some things of note of it. And um, so now listen, next week will be the final week of instruction. The week after that will be the exam. So uh, let's just, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, remember that Truman Doctrine from the Cold War. This this Vietnam War is known as a proxy war of the Cold War. And so the Truman Doctrine, remember that we will not allow communism to spread. It kind of goes along with that domino theory um, that if one nation follows the communism, then the next, then the next. And communism is just going to keep spreading. So with Vietnam, the, uh, the, the United States is trying to contain communism and stop it. And, you know, so at first, what the United States does is they send advisors, okay? And um, they send advisors to help out South Vietnam. That's who the United States was aligned with, South Vietnam. Vietnam, just like Korea, was split in North Vietnam and South Vietnam. The North Vietnam is communist. The South Vietnam is uh, democratic. But uh, North Vietnam was basically trying to take over and make the one unified communist nation of Vietnam. So the United States at first, the first step the United States does is they send advisors to Vietnam. Okay. Now, this is important. I see it on the final exam all the time. This is something called the Gulf of Tonkin. All right. And I'm going to tell you what happened in the Gulf of Tonkin. So most of these wars, now Vietnam, again, Vietnam was not a declared war, but um, you say it's a war, okay? 50,000 Americans died in, in Vietnam. But the, in Gulf of Tonkin, a U.S. ship was attacked. So if you look at the Spanish-American War, boom, U.S. ship gets attacked, all right, uh, with the USS Maine. Um, World War One. you look at the United States getting into that, remember the Lusitania was sunk, the United States, boom, gets into World War I. Uh, and then a naval attack by the Empire of Japan at the, uh, the naval base at Pearl Harbor. Uh, caused the United States to get into uh, World War II. So, but the Gulf of Tonkin, the U.S. ship is attacked. So LBJ, Lyndon Bain Johnson, asked for action from Congress, okay? Doesn't necessarily ask for a declaration of war, but he asked for, a, for action, okay? And it says the statement was prepared before the attack. So he already had designs on getting escalating this war in Vietnam and getting America more involved. So before the Gulf of Tonkin resolution, the United States had sent advisors. After the Gulf of Tonkin, they passed this resolution that gives the president authorization to send in troops, to send in military troops to basically fight, all right, to basically wage a war, but it's not a declaration of war. So that's what the Gulf of Tonkin and then the Gulf of Tonkin resolution did so with operation rolling thunder there the united states begins a bombing vietnam that's Lyndon baines johnson right there on the left okay it's a different type of war all right why is it a different type of war well because the united states the members of the military didn't necessarily know who the enemy was all right a guerrilla type of warfare hard to differentiate friend from foe so in other words what was happening is that all of uh, the local people there, again, they looked alike, but a lot of them were what's known as Viet Cong. And they were actually guerrillas fighting for the North Vietnamese. Okay, so you may think they're your friend, but in actuality, they're trying to kill you. And it's hard to, 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 to know that they're the enemy because they're not in a uniform for the other side. Okay, so that's, that's, that, that's an issue that's going on in Vietnam. Um, and I've I talked to a lot of Vietnam vets and they said it's just, it was just horrible. Okay. You see a civilian and you really, you don't know if they're there, they want to kill you or they want to be your friend. Um, whereas in prior wars, you could typically tell because of the uniform um, an insurgent or someone was wearing. So America devises these search, this is what's called search and destroy tactics, meaning search out the enemy and destroy them. So what they would do is, 
they would send American military members into the jungle, okay, Vietnam or forest, whatever you want to call it. Vietnam was a very, uh, the area in Vietnam was very, uh, there was a lot of wilderness or jungle in Vietnam. So they would go through the jungle. I'm sure you've seen Forrest Gump, that movie. If you hadn't, it's, it's a good movie. But as far as when he goes to Vietnam, he's literally just walking through the jungle looking for the enemy, waiting to get shot at. And that's what uh, a lot of the veterans of the war have told me. So that was America's first tactic, search and destroy, find the enemy, destroy them. But again, it's hard to find the enemy when you don't, you, you can't, recognize them because of the uniform they're wearing and uh, they blend in with the local population napalm all right and agent orange so this is what uh the united states did was they used napalm or fire bombing attacks to basically fire use fire to destroy the all the jungle to flush out the enemy that's what they're designed to do and it's destroyed a lot of the um the countryside in vietnam There, there's some uh, American infantrymen, you know, they're, they're walking through uh, this this rural or, or wildernized area looking for the enemy. That's search and destroy tactics. There they are again, okay, walking through a swamp. Uh, there's a lot of different pictures. The cost of the war, okay, a low morale of soldiers. Uh, so my uncle was in Vietnam, and what he told me was, when he went over there, he, he was drafted. And I'm going to get into this in a second because this is a huge issue with the war in Vietnam. When he went over there, it was like at first when they first arrived, it was, he says the biggest party he'd ever seen. Okay, they're out there, everybody's you know cooking out. They're they're all, they're on the uh, the ocean on the beach there. They had a lot of uh, a lot of festivities going on. He says probably the biggest party he's been to since. He said, but that all ended when they sent them in for these search and destroy tactics and he said for the next year it was just it was terrible okay um so the the low morale of soldiers and i'm gonna just go ahead and get into that was these soldiers a lot of them were not volunteers okay um most of them were but a lot of them were drafted into this war and this is different than the other wars where the draft had been implemented whereas in World War One and World War Two, the country had been directly attacked, or it seemed as if there was a threat to the United States. Okay, what threat? This is what a lot of Americans were thinking. What threat does a little small country of Vietnam pose to America? Really, there's really none. So a lot of them were saying, "What are we fighting for? Like, why are we over here? There's nothing they can do to us." And Vietnam doesn't want. They don't want anything. To do with us they don't want to hurt america they just want the communists just want to take over south vietnam so um with the that's a low morale of soldiers a very controversial war it's a first televised war in other words americans at home were now seeing exactly what was going on in vietnam they were seeing young men being killed or some of the atrocities young men were having to go through over there and they were the americans at home were saying wait a second why is our, our, our young sons going over there fighting when Vietnam has nothing to do with us, really? And then a credibility gap develops. So what's happening is the government is telling the American people that that the, the United States is, is winning the war, when in fact the United States was not winning the war. All right, you know, say it was it was a it was a drawn out fight. The United States was not dominating or overcoming the enemy because again they couldn't find the enemy easily where the enemy was and so that credibility gap develops meaning the, the americans are not trusting the government and so you have protests start opposition okay there's no end in sight at this point in the war all right with the protests are going on and here's what the protest so with the protest it's what's known as a working man's war meaning people who were drafted were typically from lower class um lower class families okay i'll give you an example here all right i told you my uncle was in vietnam all right well, i had another uncle on the other side of my family who his family was fairly wealthy he was able to get out of vietnam all right um and so you have a credibility gap that's starting to develop there and um 
or the non-credibility gap, but you have it's seen as unfair. You have draft deferments. People who are poor are getting drafted while people who are more wealthy are getting deferments. And, you know, this goes along. Donald Trump gets criticized a lot because he got a deferment from Vietnam. Okay, he said his, I don't know, he said something was wrong with his ankle or something, okay, which was really kind of a bogus thing for him to get out of Vietnam, but he got out of it, all right? And so you have deferments, and people are at home are looking at that like, wait a second, why is my kid having to go to Vietnam? Because just because my family's poor, that's not fair. And you have objectors, all right, specifically with the draft. Me personally, I don't believe you should be forced to serve in the military. Only in the very most extreme circumstances is that if somebody's like trying to invade America, okay, maybe. But then I would, I like to think that Americans are patriotic enough to where they would go ahead and volunteer for the draft. You have draft dodgers, so people um, that are dodging the draft, leaving the country and going to Canada and other places. There's a, a, a example of the lottery. This is they literally pick out like a lottery of uh, birthdays. And if you, you were born on that day, you will get drafted. OK, so that is um, the end of that one. I'm going to go through one more slideshow real quick about the end of the war. If we can get it to come up. OK, um, so. The protests, talked about that. American forces are over half a million. All right, with LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, this is a black mark on his legacy and ultimately why he did not run for re-election in 1968 because uh, Americans have been predicting the end of the war. All right, they got the, uh, in 1968, the Viet Cong launched a major attack on America and um, so public opinion begins to turn on Lyndon Baines Johnson. It's called the Tet Offensive. That's a major attack. So America thought we were winning the war. All right. That's what the government was telling Americans. And all of a sudden, in 1968, the Viet, North Vietnamese and Viet Cong launched this major attack. And it shows that they're not going to be defeated. All right. Not anytime soon, anyway. So there you have uh, public opinion turning on Lyndon Baines Johnson. And then 1968, uh, just Go over this real quick. You have two, it's a very tumultuous year in America. Two assassinations of two leaders, civil rights leaders, Martin Luther King Jr. and Robert Fitzgerald Kennedy, the brother of um, J JFK, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. So both of those guys are assassinated. They're two leaders in the war in Vietnam. You also have uh, the protests with civil rights still going on. So the civil rights movement's going on. And in the war at home, and in the war in Vietnam is going on in the Southeast Asia. So, what a lot of civil rights leaders, particularly Dr. King, was saying was, "Why are we sending a disproportionate amount of poor people, all right, or minorities, to fight for the country when they're not giving these same rights that they deserve at home with the civil rights? So, why are we sending black young men to fight?" for America when they're not given equal protection under the law. They're not guaranteed that 14th Amendment as they should be. So that's the idea that is uh, that, that is going on in America at the time. Again, very tumultuous year with these protests, 1968 election, Lyndon Baines Johnson went, not Lyndon Baines Johnson, Richard Milhouse Nixon wins the election. Um, he tries to leave Vietnam without admitting defeat. He starts bombing and he even escalated the war a little bit more to begin with but ultimately the united states got out of vietnam uh the united states leaves and what happens once they leave okay the vietnam falls and becomes communist one unified communist nation of vietnam ultimately there's fifty-eight thousand americans killed in vietnam um and so that's that's just the uh the, the gist of the war in Vietnam. You can I'll put these PowerPoints on. You can look at, at them on your own. Also, later, there's something called the War Powers Act, which I also see on the final exam, which limits the ability of the president to send in troops for, for an unspecified amount of time. So remember that Gulf, and Tonkin, Gulf of Tonkin resolution where um, 
where L Lyndon Baines Johnson sent in troops and they just stayed in Vietnam and fought, okay, or we kept troops in Vietnam and fought. Well, the War Powers Act, basically Congress has to authorize periodically for troops to still be over there, okay? So it limits the, pat the ability of the president to do those types of things that Lyndon Baines Johnson did with the uh, Gulf of Tonkin resolution.